in your life? Well, this is the day the Lord has made, and God has given us one more opportunity to bless His name. So in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, can we give God great praise right now for one more day to bless His name? Hallelujah in the cathedral. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. With the fruit of your lips, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Listen, we invite you to take your posture of prayer. We're about to pray and we want you to know that there are a few of our brothers and sisters who have asked that we intercede for them. So on our website, you can go to the Congregational Care page and find a listing of those who need our special intercession. But we invite you all here in the cathedral and Wheeler wherever to remember the prayer in your prayers this week. The sister, the family of our sister Frida Allen, who will be memorialized on Tuesday at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. And then we also want to remember the family of sister Beverly Sherman. And that memorial service will be Saturday. June 3rd at 5 p.m. at McCoy and Harrison Funeral Home. Again, we have a congregational care page on the church website for a complete listing of, your, of our prayer concerns, and we want you to be mindful of those. I also want you to be in prayer about our prayer summit that is coming up this weekend. We pray about prayer here, amen. But it's God's will and God's ordained timing that we would have a prayer summit right after Pentecost Sunday. Whatever you need, God has an answer. You may not know everybody on your pew, but I bet you they need a blessing. And so I'm inviting you to pray with us right now. And let's be on one accord. Don't just listen to me pray. Let's pray together. Amen. Come on, let's talk to our God. Hallelujah. Lord, how we bless you. How we honor you. How we reverence you. How we thank you so much for your goodness and your grace towards us. Your kindness and your loving compassion towards us. Your tender mercies and your grace after grace after grace on top of grace. God, you are good. You are amazing. Everything about you is wonderful. You are perfect in all your ways. We stand in awe of who you are. You are the one true living God. Beside you, there is no other. Oh, you live and you, you, you are lifted high up and yet, Lord, you are close to us. You are marvelous and, and with all that we know that you know about us, the fact that we can still come boldly before your throne of grace is really like a miracle. You know our uprising and our downfalls. Oh, but thank you that you don't cast us off. You don't cast us aside. You don't kick us to the curb. God, we're grateful that you give us chance after chance because of your mercy and the blood of Jesus that was shed at Calvary. Oh, we're grateful people today. We're grateful for the work of the cross. We're grateful that the blood of Jesus has covered our sin and we only have to come to you and confess and your word says that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, forgive us God, cleanse us God and then fill us up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you don't hold the grudge. Thank you, God, that as far as the east is from the west, that's how far you remove our sin from us. Thank you, Lord, that you don't gossip, and so everything that we've done is covered by the blood. Ooh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, God, today especially. We appreciate every day, but we thank you for your presence. We thank you for, for the gift. Ooh, we thank you for the promise being fulfilled. We thank you, God, 
that you didn't leave us to handle life by ourselves. Thank you that you gave us some help. Thank you Woo, that one comes alongside and, and walks with us and talks with us and, and not just with us but in us. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, oh God, for our comforter, our intercessor, our God, our teacher. Thank you for the one who leads us and guides us into all truth. Thank you for power from on high. Thank you that when we are weak, we, want, we can still say, I'm strong. Hallelujah. Lord, we're grateful to you today. We thank you for what you're doing in the church universal. We thank you that the gates of hell shall not prevail against your church. We thank you that you're still moving and you're still working by the power of your spirit. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is active in us right now. And so God, we say, have your way. Have your way. Let your spirit rule and reign in our hearts. Have your way. Fill us up until we overflow. Have your way. Move among us and do your own great work. You are still the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Have your way by the power of the Holy Ghost. Do what you have to do to destroy strongholds and set your people free. Heal in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing destroy some yokes today. God, have your way, have your way, have your way. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you fall fresh in this place right now. In the name of Jesus, we came for the overflow. Yes, God, yes, God, we came for the overflow. We need your spirit, God. Rain on us, rain on us. We don't want to leave the same. We got some issues, God. We need your power. We got some stuff that needs to be transformed. We need your power. Oh, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. Fill us up, oh God. Hey, we cry out to you, God. We don't want to be the same. Change our minds. Cleanse our hearts. Work on us, Jesus. Work on us, God. I'm asking you, Lord. I'm asking you, God, to blow somebody's mind. I'm asking you to do something amazing. I'm asking you to show up in all your power and glory. I'm asking you to show up on the job. Show up in the home. God, show up at the school. God, do something that will blow our minds because we're yielded to you and we say, fill us up and use us. Oh, have your way, have your way. in the spirit and lead and guide it by the spirit and not just on Pentecost Sunday oh but every day every day every day so preach one more time through the pastor give us a rhema word Lord God sing through the praise team and the choir pray through the musicians and I'm asking you Lord for the person that just came because they visited and they're seeking God, visit them in a special way. And move all across the land and country, wheel or wherever. Somebody, because their ways don't stop you. You can show up and show out. So we thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. We offer to you our full selves, oh God. And having the praises of your people. We come before you as empty vessels, before a full fountain. Fill us up, O oh Lord, until we overflow and have your way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the matchless, marvelous, mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And thank you for hearing our prayers. Hallelujah and amen.
scripture reading is coming from Ephesians 3. We'll be reading from the New International Version, Ephesians 3. The Bible says, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the, Gentile, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. To God be the glory for God's holy word. Please remain standing for this morning's hymn. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it together. There's a sweet, sweet spirit.
What a joy it is to greet you on this Sunday. I am delighted especially to greet first-time visitors who are present in this place. If that's your reality, will you stand so that we might honor your presence among us? Any first-time visitors? Amen, amen, amen. To God be the glory for each of you. Wow, wow. What a blessing, what a blessing. Church family, help me really show some love to all of our first-time friends this Sunday morning. To each of you who stands as first-time guests, on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, and our founding pastor, the Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson, whom we honor and celebrate every time we get a chance, help me thank God for our founder. Amen, amen, amen. As we celebrate the birth of the church, it's appropriate to celebrate our founder, especially on this day. Listen, on their behalf, indeed on behalf of the entire of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue, allow for me to express to each of you who stood as first-time guests just how delighted we are that you've opted to worship with us this Sunday. We're clear that you passed churches to get here, so you did not have to spend your day with us, but we thank God that you opted to do so. Uh, we pray that if you have a church home, you would take back our warmest greetings and regard to express to your church family just how excited we were to worship with you on this Sunday morning. However, if you do not have a church home, we pray that you would truly be blessed by the entirety of this experience of worship. We want for you to make yourselves at home, for we would love to call you our sisters, our brothers in this family of faith and body of believers. Whatever your reality is, we're genuinely excited about your presence among us, and I can prove it to you right now. Church family, one more time, help me show some love to all of these first-time friends. 
Listen, there are several special guests who are scattered around the, the cathedral. Uh, I want to thank God for the Wheeler Avenue Christian Academy. Would you all stand? Melissa Hamilton is their director, and we thank God for her. And the parents, a smattering of them, have joined with us and children to celebrate Waka Sunday. We thank God for our school. Uh, it is a wonderful institution. My children go there, and we are delighted to uh, continue to raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Thank God for the work that they are doing uh, just across the street. Uh, if you have children who are age baby to kinder, five, we look forward to taking care of them just across the street. They're doing a fantastic job. Amen. We likewise want to thank God for nine interns who are Mickey Leland Kibitzum Intern Foundation recipients, and they will be spending four weeks in Israel. Would you all stand? Where are the Mickey Leland interns? Amen. God bless you all. Reagan Page Johnson is one of our members, and she's headed to, it, to Israel next month. And we thank God for the great work that they are doing and will do, and we look forward to the ways by which you all will be a blessing to this world. We are delighted to welcome the fall 1995 line of New Mu Kappa, chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, representing Queens College and St. John's University. Would you all stand, ladies? We want to thank God. Dignitas Karen Tillman, bringing them to worship with us for their 28th year reunion. We honor your presence among us this day. God bless you one and all. Listen, if you stood as a first time guest, would you do us a favor? Text 77411 with the word visit WABC. Directions are on the screen. That will allow for us and Pastor Cosby more specifically to write you a letter later on this week formally expressing his joy with your presence among us on this day. If you would do that, we would be the better. We likewise, of course, thank God for all of you who tune in and worship with us virtually. We are wheeler wherever and wherever you are around this our god's globe it is our joy to welcome you even virtually into this time of sharing we pray that you are being blessed and will be blessed and if it's your very first time do us a favor and let us know especially if you're on facebook or youtube there are chats that are enabled that will allow for you to let us know and we will be the better their brothers and sisters in those chats who warmly greet you with the love of our lord and savior jesus christ on this lord's day listen to lottie dotty and everybody it's good to be here that was a whole lot. <laughs> it's good to be here in the Lord's house. The presence of the Lord is here. And we thank God for it. Let's worship in spirit and in truth. Thank the Lord for his presence of his Holy Spirit. Anybody grateful for the presence of the Spirit of the Lord? Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, let His Spirit make it known. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. Come on, let's go back together. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it. The presence of the Lord. Oh, 
the strength we need.
thank you for his spirit. Oh, that dwells. That dwells. That dwells with us. Never leave it all forsaken us. Thank you, Lord. of the Lord is here. Anybody glad to be in his presence today? The Bible declares that in his presence there is fullness of joy. Someone feels the joy of the Lord even if you're spinning right now. Come on and celebrate God in this house. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Be seated if you choose to. Be seated if you choose to. You don't have to, but if you choose to, you may be seated. <laughs> oh, bless his high name. This is that joy I was talking about. This is that joy I was mentioning a moment ago. Somebody's got some joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take away. Well, you may as well express it. You may as well express it. Come on, let's celebrate for a minute. Let's celebrate for a minute. It's Pentecost Sunday. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Come on and praise God.
Pentecost Sunday church, it's Pentecost Sunday, yes it is, this is the day that we celebrate the promise, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we thank God that on the day of Pentecost, the church universal was birthed into existence, and Christians all around the world are celebrating the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit given to us by God and how we bless the Lord for the presence of the Lord in this place today. Amen, amen, amen. Look towards somebody look close to you, maybe on your left, your right in front of you or behind you. Let them know I'm glad to be in worship with you today. I'm glad to be in worship with you today. I'm glad to be in worship with you today. If they didn't look like they want to be bothered, touch them again. I said, did you hear what I said? I said, I'm glad to be in worship with you today. Went through a lot since last Sunday, but I'm glad to be in worship with you today. <laughs> Listen, if you only knew some of the stuff I went through last week, you, you know why I shout like I shout and why I'm Jumping up like I keep jumping up. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Oh. <laughs> I ain't playing this week. I'm glad to be here in the service of the Lord. Yeah. have to look back at him and say don't mind me it's gonna be like this for the rest of the service I'm glad to be here don't mind me don't mind me I might be a little noisy today but I'm glad to be in the service glad to be in the service praise the Lord this is no ordinary day so we just uh we're not gonna act like it's an ordinary day this is a special day for the church hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to try to move on, but I'm excited about the things that God is doing. Hallelujah. 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 Well, church, we're in a celebrative season here at Wheeler Avenue. Of course, the Church Universal all around the world celebrates today Pentecost, but this is a special season for us. We talked about the Universal Church being birthed into existence on the day of Pentecost. Well, next Sunday, we celebrate when our local church was birthed into existence. We'll be 61 years old next Sunday. Praise the Lord. 61 years old. And uh, I'm always intrigued, Pastor Lawson, how the Lord led you to start our church around Pentecost. Every year around Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate our church anniversary. Sometimes, like last year, Pentecost and church anniversary are the exact same day. But I'm grateful that since, since 1962, the Holy Ghost has been working in Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and has brought us to 61 years of celebration. Help me thank God for that founding pastor right there, our leader, our chieftain, the angel that led this house for 42 years. For 42 years. Hallelujah. We praise God for you, sir. Thank God for your family. Would you believe that because of all of his work, not just at Wheeler Avenue, 
but because of all of his work around this uh, community, across this country, even around the world, um, our county commissioner honored him this past week. You know, Pastor, Pastor Lawson gets a different honor every five seconds. And uh, this, past, this past Monday, he was honored yet again. And our county commissioner um, uh, decided to name a park in his honor. A park. Yeah. Yeah. It's the William and Audrey Lawson Park. My goodness. Got a whole park named in his honor. You're a bad man, sir. You're a bad man. And I'm so grateful that uh, Commissioner Rodney Ellis decided to do that. It's right down around Adair Park area. I think they're going to change some names to make sure that the names of the Lawsons can be front and center. I'm excited about uh, the fact that God keeps blessing our founding pastor. Keep blessing him. Yeah. Next month, he will be 95 years old. One month from today. One month from today. One month from today. 95 years old. <laughs> One month from today. June 28th, he'll be 95. And we're going to celebrate. We're going to party like it's 1999. We're going to have a, have a good time celebrating for our founding pastor. When the Lord has blessed us the way he has through this man of God, we may as well celebrate him. Amen. So we're going to throw some kind of party. I don't know what kind of party it's going to be, but it's going to be some kind of party where we can celebrate what God has done for these 95 years of your life. Amen. 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 We're delighted that a woman who likewise honored him this past Monday, she couldn't make it into town because she was doing her work in Washington, D.C. But she called, put the cell phone to the microphone so she could talk to our founding pastor. Our Congresswoman is here. We thank God for Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee for the hard work that she does. She said, I'm not going to miss this. I have to do my job, but I'm likewise going to do this because it's an honor to honor him. And so thank you, ma'am. And then she honors us with her presence today. We appreciate you. Glad to see you in the house this Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon now. All right, praise the Lord. Listen, we'll be in worship Wednesday at 7 p.m. Wednesday here in the cathedral at 7 p.m. The Reverend Pastor Reginald Wayne Sharp from Chicago, Illinois is going to be here to preach our fifth and final Wednesday in the Word. Fifth and final Wednesday in the Word, 7 p.m. here in the Lord's house. At 6 p.m. we'll be here praying together. And at 6 a.m. we'll be in the virtual space praying together. So all day Wednesday we're going to be praying together. We hope that you're praying and, and worshiping together. And we hope that you will join us in that experience. And then Friday and Saturday we'll have our prayer summit. We'll have our prayer summit. If you were here for the call to worship, you heard Dr. Atupefio mentioning that we'll have our prayer summit on Friday and Saturday. The entirety of our worshiping community is invited to share with us in a worship setting on Friday evening at 7 p.m. And then we want all those who are registered to be with us all day Saturday for the Saturday experience. Please register for the conference if you've not yet done so. You can do that online today. There may be some people in the atrium this afternoon who will be waiting for you to register. But we want you to register and be in the press summit this coming th Friday and Saturday. And then, of course, on Sunday morning at, at 8 a.m. and 1130, we'll be worshiping together as the Dr. Renita G. Gene Weems comes again to preach the word of God to us and we'll be blessed with music ministry from Dr. Judith Christie McAllister. It's going to be a great week. We're going to take the time tomorrow to rest on the holiday or do whatever you want to do and recreate on tomorrow. And then Tuesday we'll hit, hit the jobs and the schools or whatever you have to do on Tuesday. Then Wednesday we begin our week of final celebration heading toward our 61st church anniversary. And I hope that you will share, share with us in celebration. Well, it's offering time in the Lord's church and we're excited to give back to God a portion of what he's given to us we want to honor God with our resources the tithe is holy unto the Lord the first 10 percent of our increase goes to God so there are ushers who are moving about us now and they have envelopes if you choose to use an envelope to put a paper gift into that envelope or you can use the digital platforms that are scrolling on the screen and you can utilize those to ensure that the gift that you choose to give is given unto God 
We give our tithes, our offerings, our gifts to missions and mercy. For those who've never heard about missions and mercy, that's when we just bless other brothers and sisters who need the assistance of this church. They've fallen on some difficult times and they've asked for the assistance of our congregation and we share it joyfully and willingly with them. And then, of course, we're going to, uh, going to make sure that we eliminate the debt on this cathedral. We've already eliminated the debt on our Christian education complex. And in just a few short years, we plan to do the same for this building. And we thank you so much for your generosity in helping us to ensure that we are a debt-free church in the very, very near future. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. So if you've received your gifts, if you've received your envelopes, rather, and you're ready to give your gifts, I want to pray a prayer of consecration, and then we'll provide them unto the Lord as an act of worship unto him. Let us pray. Gracious God, I we give you thanks for who you are and for all that you mean to us. We thank you that you are a gift-giving God. You give us the gift of new mercies every single day. Thank you so much for the grace that is sufficient for us. Thank you so much for your loving kindness and your compassion. We thank you that you keep giving and giving and giving more gifts unto your children. And now we come to emulate you as we give back unto you a portion of what you've given to us. Take now our gifts, use them for your glory. And then I pray that as you use them for kingdom building purposes, no one will lack as a consequence of what they give. Give back unto your sons and daughters so that we will always have the testimony that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. We thank you for victory in our finances. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Let's give unto our God. I neglected to mention our council member who is here with the, with the congresswoman. She's a member of our church. We're grateful that Dr. Council member is here with us today and we celebrate with her, Carolyn Evans Shabazz. God bless you. Come on, choir, prepare us for the word of God as you do so each and every week.
Pentecost Sunday, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. It's pretty much what I want to talk about this afternoon for these next 25 to 30 minutes or so. I want to call our attention back to that passage of scripture that the Reverend Boone read so ably earlier in worship. He read from Ephesians chapter 3 in the New Testament of our scriptures. And he read the entirety of that chapter, verse 1 through verse 21. I want to reread verse 20. It's the most memorable verse, I suspect, of this entire chapter. And on this Pentecost Sunday, I want to reread verse 20. I want you to read it with me. I want you to read it with me. We're going to begin from the New International Version of the Holy Word of God. And then I want to read it from the King James Version after that. So let's... Let's read it together. It's on the screen. And if you can see it, let's read together. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Amen. That's the New International Version of God's Word in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. But Pastor Lawson, I didn't grow up on the New International Version. I grew up on the King James Version, and usually every time we quote this passage, we quote it from the King James Version. So let's read it together from this passage of Scripture. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. Somebody praise God for that right there. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And for these moments that we spend together, I want to talk simply from the subject, the power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about the power of the Spirit. As a new buzz phrase it may not be so new anymore but there's a buzz phrase that runs through the church that many of us have heard or will soon hear it kind of describes the majority of those of us who are in church today that buzz phrase is a balanced christian have you ever heard of a balanced christian balanced Christian is usually someone when they speak of a balanced Christian they're speaking of someone who loves Jesus and also loves a good joke or two or three here and there not so stuffy and stiff that you can't laugh every now and then a balanced Christian balanced Christian is somebody who doesn't mind a holy dance like we've been dancing in this place today you will engage in a holy dance and a little line dancing after church won't be too bad either. If the wobble started right now, I'd lose half the church, including the congresswoman. Look at her clapping. She's so happy. She's so happy. I've seen her do it. I've seen her do it. There's some people in this room who can testify. If the wobble doesn't get you, let the electric slide get turned on, that'll get you. You are a balanced Christian. Balanced Christian is usually somebody who will have communion on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. <laughs> Show enough Saturday, I'm just saying. That's why you came to the second service. <laughs> Balanced Christians. When you read Ephesians, the entirety of the book, you'll find out that the Apostle Paul is calling the church to be balanced Christians. When you read the book of Ephesians, you'll find out that from chapter 1 to chapter 6, just six short chapters, the Apostle Paul, this leader of the church, has written this missive to call the people of God 
to be balanced Christians. No, he's not talking about joking or drinking or dancing. No, he talks about in the first three chapters, discipline and doctrine. He balances these things of doctrine and discipline. Surely, for chapters 1, 2, and 3, to be sure, are doctrinal passages of Scripture, what we know about God. Chapters 4, 5, and 6 are discipline chapters, what we do because of what we know about God. What, what, what Paul does in these six chapters is in the first three chapters, balance our beliefs and our behaviors. He says, if you're going to be a balanced Christian, you got to be able to hold on to embrace both your beliefs and your behaviors, your doctrine and your discipline, what you know and what you believe, what you do, how you live out your faith. And if you read these six chapters, you'll find out that sometimes Paul gives us some hard words some hard language, some tough love to be sure, to make sure that we are balanced Christians. He helps us to understand that we can't just have a good time on Sunday in the Lord's church and give people hard time Monday through Saturday beyond the Lord's church. We have to be people who understand and the joy of the Lord that we experience in here should be given to somebody once we leave here. It should be expressed to somebody after the benediction has been pronounced. So this, this great leader of the Lord's church by the name of Paul, Saul of Tarsus was once his name, but got converted, got changed by the power of the Lord. And when he got changed by the power of the Lord, he went on an all-out mission to make sure that everybody would know who the Lord Jesus is and what the Lord was able to do. So he gives to us these three chapters on doctrine. And when he gets done with doctrine, at the very end of chapter three, he gives to us a doxology. That's what you read in, in, your, in, 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 that verse, in those verses that we just lifted up in verse 20. You read a doxology. It is a praise party, a celebration in praise to the God who has been so good. It's intriguing to me that after giving so much information about doctrine, he would end up with a doxology. Hear it again, hear it again. It's, it's a celebration to God. He says, now unto him. And is able to do exceeding abundantly. Notice the words. Please watch the words. I want you to make sure that when you quote the verse, you quote it correctly. Many times we say exceedingly abundantly. That is not the word. He says exceeding abundantly. That the abundantly is nice, but God exceeds the abundantly that we can even imagine God to do. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, the New International Version says, all we ask or even imagine that your mind can't conjure up all the wonderful things that God is able to do. That when you think of what you need most from God, Paul says your God can do more than that. <laughs> and when you think of the biggest challenge you have, God can handle more than that. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. And here it is, don't miss this last part. You often stop short of citing, reciting this last part. According to the power that is at work within us. This, my friends, is the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. He says that every one of us who is in the church has been gifted, granted, graced with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we ought not take light of that. We ought take note of it to be sure, to ensure that every time we wake up in the morning, when we give thanks to God, we can thank God for the presence and the power of his Holy Spirit. That each of us has been graced with the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you come into the body of Christ, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that no one can come to the Lord except the Spirit draws them. So each of us who has come to the Lord has come because of the Holy Spirit drawing us and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And every day of your life, you ought to thank God for the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, even Jesus himself said he couldn't do his ministry save the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus got ready to do his work in the world, in Luke chapter 4 at verse 18, he stood up in front of everybody and this is what he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He's anointed me to release the captives. He's anointed me to recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He says, I cannot change this world without the power of the Holy Spirit resting on my life. Child of God, I want you to know before you leave this church this Sunday that you and I need the presence of the Holy Spirit. No, no, I said you and I need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and Jesus knew we were going to need the Holy Spirit. And so when he rose from the dead, he appeared to several people in Acts chapter 1. And when he appeared to them, he said this to them. He said, listen, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and then you'll be my witnesses everywhere you go. And when you get the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to tell everybody and anybody about who I am and what I'm able to do. You'll be my witnesses everywhere. That the Holy Spirit literally enables us to <clears throat> clear our throats and open up our mouths and speak about the goodness of the Lord. Even the most timid, even the most shy, when filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, will testify that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you don't know where you would be. So today, church family, I invite you, I implore you to embrace the power of the Spirit because the power of the Spirit will do more for you than you could ever do for yourself. The power of the Spirit will do more for you than your greatest connections can do because the Spirit opens doors that no one can close and closes doors that no one can open. The Spirit of God will make ways that you could never make for yourself. The Spirit of the living God will give you a testimony that it was nobody but the Lord. Oh, I see I'm in the right church this afternoon because there's some people in this building who can testify. You already have that witness that it was nobody but the Lord who taught you what you needed to know and took you where you needed to go. It was nobody but the Lord who made ways for you and provisions for you when you could not do it for yourself. There's somebody in here with a nobody but the Lord testimony. Yes, sir. So when we read through Ephesians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul is trying to help us to understand that the Spirit <laughs> enables us to do things far beyond our wildest imaginations. The Spirit gives us power. That word power is mentioned four times in chapter 3. It is the Greek word dunamis. It is the same word from which we get our word dynamite. He says when you get this kind of power, it is explosive. When you get this kind of power, it cannot be contained. When you get this kind of power, everybody going to know it's something different about you. Something, something different. Something about, something about you. He says, this is the kind of power we need. And he says, this power comes from the Spirit. Multiple times in chapter 3, he says, the Spirit's power, the power of the Spirit. He refers us to the power that the Holy Spirit gives to us. Pneuma is the Greek word for spirit. It literally is the breath of God, the wind of God, the enablement of God, that God breathes God's breath into you and gives you ablement, enablement to do that which you would never be able to do by yourself. I came to tell you, you need the power of the Spirit. I'm going to say it about four more times before this message is over. Because I want to make sure that you and everybody around you hears me. You need the power of the Spirit. Here it is, church. When Paul opens up this missive, he gives to us a little intro introductory information, which is ironic because he had already introduced himself in the previous chapters, but he says he's the prisoner of the Lord. And when he gives us that information, he then begins to chronicle for us some information we need to know about what the Spirit does for us. He says that if you stay closely connected with the Spirit, you'll get revelation from the Spirit. Uh, somebody say revelation. He said, revelation from the Spirit. If you read those first 13 verses, if you heard the Reverend Boone as he read them, he said over and over again this word, mystery. And when he said mystery, he also said the word revelation. He said the word revealed because it shows up multiple times in verses 1 through 13, literally suggesting that there are some things that are mysterious to many of us, but if we have the Spirit working for us and with us, he reveals those things to us so that we will have insight that we could not have with our normal perception. 
Oh, please hear me. I like the word mystery. He says, you don't understand everything about God, but God uses some mysterious ways to inform his children. And that is he reveals things through the spirit. I'm talking to somebody today who can testify. You're grateful for your educational pursuits. And many of you have some wonderful educational pursuits, but there are some things that your education will not reveal to you. There are some things that your experiences on the job will not reveal to you but when you ask the Lord to open up your eyes when you <laughs> when you ask the Lord to give you discernment there's a churchy word he will help you to know exactly what you need to know in those moments when you need to know it no don't be bothered with him he's shysty no don't be bothered with them they're not the crowd for you is there anybody in here who can testify the Holy Ghost will tell you that's not the job for you I got something better for you over here the Holy Ghost will tell you that's not the relationship I have for you I need you to be over here somewhere I need somebody to help me preach this afternoon and testify the Holy Ghost revealed. Paul says it's been revealed by the Spirit. It's been revealed by the Spirit. Now this mystery he speaks about has been talked about in chapter 2. For in chapter 2 he says that God decided through his mighty power to tear down the middle wall of partition that separated humanity from divinity. He says he wanted to preach to the Gentiles because the Gentiles needed to know that they had been accepted in the family just like the Jews had been. He says that there was no more separation between the haves and have nots because Jesus included everybody and now the Holy Ghost is working through everybody. He says the mystery is God took Jews, Gentiles, and everybody else and put them in the church. That's the mystery he talks about. He says that everybody is in the church now. This intrigues me because ain't nothing changed. Excuse me, bag vernacular. Nothing has changed from that day until this because everybody and anybody can come to the church and know that you will find safe haven in the Lord's church. Now, that's the way it's supposed to be. Meet me at point two, we'll talk a little bit more about it. He says that in the church, the mystery of God is revealed. That God begins to speak, he says, through his prophets and the apostles to let them know that everybody is included in the Lord's family. That's why in verse 6, he calls us heirs together, H-E-I-R-S, heirs together. He says we are members together of the body of Christ. He says, he says that we are sharers together. King James Version says it, partakers together. That all of us are included in the family of God. That's why you should never come to church and feel that you are an isolationist. You ought to find company up in here if you can't find it in the club. You ought to find company up in here if you can't find it in the restaurant, where you have at the, at the ballpark. Is there anybody in here who can testify? This is the place where we become family. I, I was teasing Pastor Lawson I was teasing with the first service when I said this I said that's why you can't get too upset with the preacher when they tell you to turn to your neighbor y'all got upset already just that fast can't get upset because, because we communicate with one another when I stood up here a few minutes ago I told you to tell somebody close to you I'm glad to be in worship with you that was a test to see if you would do that because I knew what I was going to talk about when I got to point one. So if you didn't tell somebody, I'm glad to be in service with you, that means that you are separating yourself from the togetherness that God has brought us to. And you need to know you're connected to somebody. You are connected to some sister, some brother. So when you need something, the strong will bear the infirmities of the weak. You ought to be connected to somebody so you don't have to go through hell by yourself. You know somebody's going to go through that thing with you. You connect to somebody. So turn to your neighbor. Just checking. That's all I needed you to do. Good job. Good job. I like this church. It's the revelation from the Spirit. He says, when you understand the church, and how we're connected to one another. It helps you to keep going when you feel like giving up. Woo. 
You want to know why? Why sometimes I just let the praise breaks go on when y'all go on in the praise? I just let them go because somebody needs a catharsis that you can't get when you somewhere out in the street somewhere. You you need to release yourself from all that pent up frustration that has held you bound. When all the folk out there who are trying to get after us, you need to come in here and know if God be for us. can be against us. We need the power of the Spirit. The Spirit reveals to us some things. There's the revelation from the Spirit, but can I move faster when I tell you that not only does Paul describe for us the revelation from the Spirit, he describes for us mobilization by the Spirit. Somebody say mobilization. It means he starts you moving, he gets you moving. He, <laughs> he keeps you going. Uh, he keeps you going. And he does that, watch this, Bible says, verses 14 and following, verse 17 especially, he does this by strengthening you by his spirit in the inner being. Try it again. He, he keeps us mobilized, keeps us moving, keeps us going by strengthening us by his spirit in the inner being. Yeah. That's why we say the Holy Ghost is in us. He's stra- it's an inside job. That he works on the inside so we might be mobilized on the outside. Woo. That he literally, he literally gives to us all the strength that we need if we rely on him to do all the things we need to do. Now that sounds good to me because I've got some assignments in my life that I can't handle in my own strength. And, and it doesn't matter, let me, let me clear this up, it doesn't matter how much you go to the gym, how much you walk around the block, how many push-ups you do, it's some stuff that outer strength can't give you. You need something on the inside. Are you listening to me? Did you hear what I just said? I want you to take care of the outside. I want you to strengthen your muscles, but you need some spiritual muscle every now and then because some stuff is going to come upon you that you can't handle with outside strength. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And a push-up can't get you out of that. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We, we, need, we need to be strengthened in the inner being. We need to be strengthened in the inner being. We need something from the inside that's going to help us to work on the outside. But let me show you what Paul says we need this strength to do. Is your Bible still open? If it's still open, you'll find these words. He says, I pray, verse 16, that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Woo, that's a lot of words. You want to know? Why you have me to help you explain all them words? Paul says, listen, I want you to understand that the reason I'm praying that you will have strength in the inner being is so that as the church, you can show each other love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I figured I figured I wasn't going to bless everybody. Uh, But when you've been hated on enough, out there, you need to be loved on a lot in here. uh, If you've ever had to experience racism and sexism and classism, whenever somebody kept you out the clique, the club and the crew, whenever somebody pushed you aside and they did not show you the love that you needed, even if it was in your own house, you need to come to the church house and say, it's some love in here (laughs) that is high and deep and wide and long. I need to find somebody in here who can testify. I don't need to come to church and find hate. It's enough of that out there. I need to come in here and find somebody who will love me to life. in here so we can feel the love of God from each other 
No, no, let me give it to you again. I said we can't be isolationists because when we come in here, we need to feel the love of God from each other. And the Spirit strengthens you on the inside to love folk on the outside. I need somebody in here to testify. You're so grateful that you found some loving people when you came to church because your life got revolutionized when you found out that there were people who really would be nice to you, really would be sweet to you, really would love the hell out of you. Is there anybody in here? I said they love the hell out of you because you had a whole lot of hell in you and when you came up in here they methodically and meticulously and consistently loved the hell out of you. That's why we say things I used to do I don't do anymore because I've been loved to a place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody can look back over your life and testify, you better off in 23 than you were back in 18. You better off in 23 since you had to go through that pandemic and now you back up in church. Thank you, Jesus. And we don't come here just to receive love. We likewise come to release love. Even if it's an act of faith, I want you to turn towards somebody. Tell them I love you. That that may have been an act of faith for some of y'all, but say it anyhow. Grow into it, grow into it, grow into it. (laughs) I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But when we come in here, we get mobilized because we get strengthened to, from the inner man, the inner being. We get strengthened on the inside. Some of us have some hard jobs that have to be done in this world, and we need strength from the inner man, inner being. So, some of us have some difficult assignments that we have to handle, and we need some strength from the inner being. Is there anybody in here who can testify? I'm going to get my good hours of sleep. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to take care of this body, but I need something on the inside. I need some power on the inside. Power on the inside to love the unlovable. Treat those who treat me badly better than they treat me. Should have been a few more amens right there. I lost a few. Treat those who treat me badly better than they treat me. Okay, that was 60% of the room. I'm going to treat those who treat me badly better than they treat me. If you got to do it by faith, just go ahead and say amen. I'm going to treat those who treat me badly better than they treat me. You said, Pastor, I can't do all that. I know my limitations. Pastor, I can't do all that. You don't know my life. You don't know my life. I can't do all that, Pastor. You know, I'm not that strong of an individual. <laughs> That's why chapter 3 doesn't stop with verse 19. (laughs) You just caught it. You just got it. That's why chapter 3 doesn't stop with you having to be full of the measure of God. No. It says you don't have to do this by yourself. You don't have to do this in your own strength. Now! under him who is able you might not be but he is able thank you God to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think oh church family I need somebody in here who can testify that when you can't your God can when you won't your God will when you're limited your God is limitless I need somebody to take the brakes off God that's what Dewey said and just believe that there is nothing he cannot do Oh, he's going to give you power. I said he's going to give you power, church. He says, now unto him, I love the New International Version, who is able to do immeasurably more that you in, our, in, your finite, in your finitude cannot measure how 
much God is able to do for you. Watch this. Through the power that's at work within you. That's why you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, church. Because you know that you don't have to do things by yourself. You have the participation of the Spirit. And I need to ask anybody in church today, have you ever had to lean on the power of the Spirit when you couldn't handle things by yourself? Come on, Lee, I'm ready. Is there anybody in here who's ever had to lean on the power of the Spirit and say, God, I'm going down for the count. I need your Holy Spirit to lift me back up and give me another opportunity to face this mean, cruel world. There's too much opposition coming my way. I need somebody in participation with me to let me know I can make it. Let me know. Let me know I can take it. Let me know that this too shall pass. And one of the wonderful things about the Holy Ghost is that he brings to your remembrance everything that the Lord has taught you. And every now and then he'll let you know. <laughs> no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Every now and then he'll remind you that even if weeping endures for a night, joy is coming in the morning. Every now and then the Holy Spirit will remind you that they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And I need the believers in here to help me now and begin to testify. I'm grateful for the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm grateful for the power of the Holy Spirit because he orders my steps. He leads me in ways I never would have gone by myself. He's my comforter. He's my guide. He's my advocate. He's my helper. He's my leading post. He helps me to make it when I feel like giving up. So be not dismayed, whatever betide, because God will take care of you. And is there a believer in this church who can testify that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think? I need you to get in your mind right now that one assignment that's too much for you that one situation that's too critical for you and I need you to go ahead and get ready to celebrate the fact that because you got the power of the spirit you don't have to deal with it by yourself you got a Holy Ghost inside you who will say I got this one I can handle this one I'll do this one for you somebody in church today ought to thank God for the Holy Spirit and when you recognize and realize what the Holy Spirit will do the verse 21 says to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all generations world without end amen what you're talking about preacher when you realize what God has done for you it ought to make you rejoice with everybody around you that he is able to fight your battles and meet your needs and give you peace and give you contentment and give you joy so I need 10 people in here who know God is able to go ahead and throw your head back and begin to rejoice that he's fighting your battles he's taking care of your tomorrow he's taking care of June while you still sitting in May is there anybody who believes that he's participating in your progress is there anybody who is grateful that he never leaves you he never forsakes you can I go old school he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I am his own and the joy that we share as we tarry there no other has ever known I haven't asked you in a long time but won't he make a way for you won't he open doors for you won't he fight your battle for you shout he
you can take it. You can handle it. Because you got somebody participating with you. Last couple weeks, uh, I've been watching God just open doors that I couldn't open by myself. So when I come up in here preaching this stuff to you, I'm not just preaching something I learned in school. I'm preaching something I've lived. And I'm a witness. To the participatory power of the Holy Spirit. You know, you, you live differently. You act differently. When you know you got somebody helping you out. When, when you know you got a partner in the struggle and that partner has more strength than you do. It'll make, I'm, I'm trying to stop, but I want to encourage somebody this afternoon that you are not in this by yourself, bro. You're not in this on your own, sis. And maybe it's our fault that we haven't talked enough about the Holy Ghost. Because we think the Holy Ghost makes me dance. That's all he does. Oh, I will dance. Oh, yes, I will. But after the benediction, I got to walk straight. I got to live straight. I got to. I got to go sit out in some meetings and think straight. I, I got to plan some stuff. I, oh yeah, we gonna dance. Yeah, sure. Absolutely, we need that. But we need the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't need His power to dance. You need his power to live. And I want you to live. I said I want you to live. I don't want you to just exist. I don't want you to just go through the motions. I want you to live. The Bible says Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Anybody want that kind of life? have it to the full and you live that life by allowing the Holy Spirit to abide in you to guide you and to live in you so that you can live out his purposes in your life well we've got to go but I want to pray for you that you might experience the proud the power of the Holy Spirit this week in a way you never have before this week it's not some spooky reality it's help when you need it the most so God in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ will you help your people through the power of your Holy Spirit Will you aid us, come alongside us, assist us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for working in us. <laughs> Thank you for working on us. Thank you for working through us. Thank you for working in spite of us. Will you give to us an experience this week that leaves us saying it was nobody but the Holy Ghost. Show to us this week that you're still in complete control and that you do the supernatural in those of us who simply yield ourselves to your will. We celebrate you this day because your word declares that we should celebrate you. That doxology is a word of praise unto you. So we praise you and we do it throughout all generations world without end amen amen and amen celebrate the holy spirit's power celebrate the promise of the holy ghost hallelujah celebrate the presence of the holy spirit yes, it is here. our leaders are coming to stand with me and as they come to stand with me now there may be somebody around this church 
who says, Pastor, I need to know about the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. You hear on this Sunday afternoon, you said, Pastor, I, I've been hearing these words all day long in this service. Holy Ghost, Holy Power, Holy Spirit, power, presence. I didn't know much about it when I first came in. But now I, I see that there's something significant to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you're here on this Sunday afternoon, you say, Pastor, I need to be in relationship with God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I need to be in relationship with the people of God who gathered at the Wheeler Avenue Church so I can grow and mature and develop and become the person that God wants me to become. Just before we leave, there's an invitation that's being extended to men, women, and children who say, I need to know the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're walking already. Come on, sis. Bring that precious young one with you. Yes. Come on, we're excited about your future. Here it is. Pastor, I'm unsaved. I don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, don't worry about that. All of us have been drawn by the Holy Spirit so we might have a relationship with Jesus. He will save you, renew you, seal you for all eternity through the power of the Holy Ghost. If you're here on this Sunday afternoon, you say, Pastor, I don't, I don't understand that salvation piece. I want you to come on down here. Somebody in this group will explain it to you before you leave the church today. I, I see you walking. I praise God for you. Amen. Come on, come on. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear sister. Come on down that center aisle. If you're in the balcony, come down this way. Hey, sis, bless you. We've been waiting on you. You say, Pastor, I'm saved. I know I am. I have a relationship with the Lord. I just need a church home. I need a pastor to guide me through the word of God. If you're here on this Sunday afternoon, you say, Pastor, I need a church. Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church opens our arms to you. Sister, brother, man, woman, or child. Come on, right now. Come on, right now. This invitation is extended to you. Hey there, come on. Been looking up for you, waiting for you. God bless you. Come on, man. I see you coming behind you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Listen. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. Whenever you see somebody walking past you coming this way, that's your cue to start clapping your hands and celebrate with them. Whenever they walk past you and they're coming this way, just start celebrating. That life is about to change. God bless you, man of God. Praise God for your decision. God bless you, sis. Praise God for you. Whenever somebody walks past you, that's your cue. Yes. Come on, come on. <laughs> They're really excited about your family. Praise the Lord for your family. Hey, sis, God bless you. Welcome to the church. God bless you, sis. We see you coming this way. Praise God for you. Look at these precious people coming down these steps right there. I see you making your way this way. If you're upstairs in that balcony, come on right now. You need to be down here. Come on. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. If you're here, there you come. God bless you. Praise the Lord for your decision. Hey, ladies, God bless you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Yeah, God bless you. Come right on this way. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yeah, here they come from the balcony. I see you coming. I hear you say, but pastor, you don't know my life. I've made some bad decisions. I've made some errors. Listen, every one of us have made some bad decisions, some errors. That's why we need God in our lives to help us to make better decisions in the years to come than we did in years gone by. So come on, don't let your past stop you. You're welcome here. You're welcome here. Whosoever will, let him, let her come. No matter your age or stage of life, from the eldest to the youngest, youngest to the eldest, you're welcome here. That matter your ethnicity, that matter your background, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who else needs to come? Come on, sis. Come on, bro. Come on. Even right now, as we sing this refrain one more time, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. If you know it, if you remember it, sing with the music ministry. We need the power. If you need to come, come on. Come on. We're waiting for you. We're waiting for you. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. Holy Spirit, sing church. Holy Spirit, send your anointing.
fall down. ask you a series of questions and when I ask you this series of questions I want you to ask someone close to you the same series of questions here's the first question ask somebody close to you is the pastor waiting on you wait for an answer if they say yes say I'll walk with you if you want me to if they say no say praise the Lord if they don't answer ask them again you heard that man is the pastor waiting on you God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for being truthful in the Lord's house. God bless you, sis. See, they just needed some encouragement. If you encourage the folk, they'll, they'll, they'll do what needs to be done. Just needed encouragement. They needed somebody to love them. They needed somebody to love them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, man. This is why we came to church today. So we could love on you. That's why we're here. To love on you. Yep. This is what we do. God bless you, man. We love you. We love you. Hey, y'all. We've been waiting on you. Come on. Hey, sis. Praise the Lord. Hey, bro. Black excellence. I like it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Here they come. Here they come. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Send your power. Hey, we've been waiting on you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, man, we've been waiting on you. God bless you. Welcome. Send your Deacon Anthony Square, are you here today? Deacon Square, is he here today? Where's Deacon Square? Is he here today? No. Hey, somebody's coming. Come on. Let's shoot. Let's shoot. Praise the Lord. Deacon Isidore James, I need you to come from that position. See about our brother here. Yeah. Come on. We got all down and listen. I told you it was a series of questions. I didn't forget. I need you to look back towards somebody. You never know who needs your encouragement. Say, are you a member of a church? Are you a member of a church? Ask them. Are you a member of church? If they say yes, say praise the Lord. Then ask them, are you growing where you're going? Yeah, I'm getting all in your business today. All in your business. If they say yes, say praise the Lord. If they say no, say you want to, are you being led to Wheeler Avenue? I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. Not forcing you, I'll just walk with you if you want to go. I walk with you. Is that brother coming? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. 
We're about to leave. We're about to leave. We're about to leave. Yep. Come on, come on, we're waiting on you. This is this is what we have to do. I don't want you to leave here and have not responded to the call of the Holy Spirit. Hey sis, we've been waiting on you. God bless you. Welcome to the family. Come on, man. Come on, bruh. God bless you. God bless you. Hey sis, God bless you. She's already wearing a wheel of shirt. Come on, sis. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Hey man, God bless you, brother. We've been waiting on you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Look at what the Lord has done, church. Look at what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. Listen, you should already have recognized and we are really excited that the Lord led you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I want you to know that we're delighted that out of all the places where God could have sent you to either commence or continue your Christian journey, he sent you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And from the youngest to the elders, we want you to know that you are welcome here. We praise God for you and we look forward to your journey as you are empowered, enabled, by the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Wheeler Avenue. On behalf of that distinguished gentleman sitting right behind you, that's our founding pastor and every other member of our congregation, welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We're glad you're here. Show them how glad we are to have you here. God bless you. Yep. God bless you. Listen, where we go? All right. Go split up. All right. I'm going to ask that right here, right there, that's the line of demarcation. All of you on this side, will you turn to my right and go this way, going up those stairs. The Reverend Boone is right there. He's going to receive you along with our deaconess, Mrs. Smith. And then if you go this way on, your, on this side, go up those steps. The Reverend Piles is right there. She, along with other team members, are going to assist you in the process of new member orientation. I want you to know that your best days are still ahead of you because the Holy Ghost is going to enable you to do all the things that he's called you to do. Welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. You may go this way. God bless you. Please go right ahead. Praise God for all of our sisters and brothers who have come this afternoon. about a minute over time maybe two minutes over time and I'm thankful that you stayed uh, to share in the in the benediction the, the, the doxology that we're going to sing if you watched the game last night you know anything can happen you better stay to the end stay to the end anybody watch the game last night you better stay to I stopped preparing my message to watch that game don't tell the church that I told you okay I put the Bible to the side and did just like this for a couple hours. Praise the Lord. Huh? Balance, thank you. Thank you, balance, balance. Basketball and Bible, hallelujah. <laughs> Let's praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh! 
parasites. Our congresswoman has a new, new plan before her now. So we want to pray for her as she begins running for the mayor of this city for the next term. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She's such a fighter for justice and for people everywhere. And I thank God that you came by to share with us. And all the Mickey Leland fellows, God bless you. Praise God for you as you prepare for this next leg of your journey. Thank you for being with us. All those who've come to share with us for the first time, don't make it your last time. Come on back whenever you have the opportunity. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And you're going out and you're coming in. In your labor and in your leisure, in your joy, as well as in your sorrow. In your laughter and likewise in your tears until that day when we meet the Lord face to face and cry holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. Till that day, my brothers, my sisters, go in peace, go in love, go in joy. And may the very God of peace, love, and joy go with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, let's all sing together with uplifted voices. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a great rest of this week. Enjoy some downtime tomorrow if you can. Wednesday, we'll be here. Thursday, day off. Friday, Saturday, we'll be here. Sunday, 61st anniversary. Great week.